Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. We finally got a new single board computer for 2021 and we're going to take a look at how it performs today. This is the all new Firefly Rock 3566 PC. Hence the name. This is powered by the all new Rock Chip 3566. We also have four gigs of RAM and Firefly is offering this in a few different variants. Right now they have the two gig model and the four gig model available on their website. But later on down the road, they will be releasing a model with eight gigs of RAM. This one here is the 4GB model. It also comes pre-installed with 32GB of eMMC storage. There's also a micro SD card slot and it will support an M.2 NVMe SSD because we do have an M.2 slot on this board. So there's a lot of different options for storage with this unit. It comes with a USB Type-C cable and our Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi antenna. And here it is, the Firefly Rock 3566 PC. As of making this video, there are two operating systems available. We have Android 11, which comes pre-installed on the eMMC module, and that's what we're going to be testing in this video. And they also have a really early version of Ubuntu. I will have a video coming up on that, but I kind of wanted to wait at least a week so they could iron out a few bugs. As for I.O., over here on this side, we have a USB Type-C connector. This will work for OTG and power. No video out of this one. Full-size HDMI, gigabit Ethernet, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Moving all the way over to the other side, we have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0 port, and they've also included an IR receiver on this unit. Over on this side, we have 20 GPIO pins, which is a little less than, let's say, the Raspberry Pi or other single board computers. We also have a DSi connector up here, so we can connect an extra display up to 1080p. And if we flip this over on the same exact side, it's a CSI connector, so we can connect a camera. Moving back around to the top here, we have kind of a side-mounted M.2 slot, and this will support an NVMe SSD. I'm not exactly sure what else we can support here, but, uh, you know, we always have our fingers crossed that we can hook up a GPU to this later on down the road in Linux. And this is running at PCIe 2.0. Flipping the board back over, we have a micro SD card slot. You can run your operating system from this, the M.2 SSD if you want to add one, or the internal eMMC storage. Now as for the performance specs here, that CPU is the RK3566. This is a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the Mali-G52 2EE. 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0 right out of the box, and this will support Android 11 and Linux. Like I mentioned, this is already running Android 11 from that eMMC right from the factory, so that's what we're going to be testing in this video. And of course, since this will be compared to the Raspberry Pi 4, I figured I'd go ahead and just show you a size comparison here. The ROC 3566 is a bit larger in the form factor, but when it comes to height, we do have the Raspberry Pi 4 beat out because we don't have that stacked USB, so we are lacking some I.O. here. In my testing, I will be adding a cooler to this Firefly board. I just don't want it the thermal throttle. I kind of want to get as much as we can out of this thing. And uh, the one I chose was just already sitting on my desk. It's definitely overkill. But once this is in place, we don't have to worry about any thermal throttling while we're gaming or running benchmarks on this board. And uh, here it is, Android 11. This is what came pre-installed on the eMMC module. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to these single board computers running Android, a lot of the times they won't have Google Play installed. And since this is Android 11, it's a little hard to get it up and running. If this was running something like Android 9 or even 10, there's a chance that I could get Google Play installed on this. But since we're on 11, I mean, I just don't have any way to do it. So I had to use a third-party app store. I use Aptoid, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have any Google Play services. So there's still a lot of stuff that I'm not going to be able to test here that I really wanted to run some tests with. At least we can run some benchmarks, some emulators, and a few select games. As for UI performance, I mean, it's pretty snappy. I was actually not expecting it to be this snappy here, but I really think it does come down to that eMMC. It is a Kingston module in here, and it's decently fast for a single board computer. And real quick, we'll just open up Ida64 here. Just want to show you, we have the Rock RK3566 PC from Firefly, 4 gigs of RAM. We have that new RK3566 CPU up to 1.8 gigahertz and the Mali G52. And we're rocking that Android 11 with a security patch from um, April 5th, 2021. I do have a bunch of stuff to test here, but the first thing I want to do is move over to my 4K monitor. 
All right, so first things first, I really wanted to get some 4K video playback out of the way. When it comes to these ARM chips, a lot of these manufacturers claim that it'll do 4K right out of the box, and on initial launch, a lot of them are really hard pressed to do good 4K video playback. So let's go ahead and open up YouTube. Since we don't have Google Play installed, I did have to use YouTube Vance, but uh, we can get 4K here. Go full screen, we got stats for nerds on and let it play out. Give it a second, it will swap over to 4K if you take a look at stats for nerds up there. There we go. So we just swapped over to 4K here. We're getting a couple drop frames, but uh, overall it's really not that bad. Now, one thing I have noticed is even though this is in 4K, our viewpoint is still set at 1080p. I have no way to change the resolution, at least right now with this release of Android for this board. But as you can see, out of about 1,200 frames, we've dropped 19. And overall, I've had really good luck with 4K streaming on this device, so let's check out some 4K native playback from the internal storage. We'll just use the built-in video player here. And we'll go with a higher bitrate 4K HDR MP4. And this should swap over to HDR because this, there it is. This monitor does support it. And even with native playback from the internal storage or even an external USB 3.0 drive, the RK3566 can definitely handle 4K video playback. And actually, being so early in the game right now with this chipset here, given that it's not in a lot of devices, this is actually some of the best performance that I've seen out of these lower-end ARM chips. Moving over to some benchmarks, first up we have Geekbench 5, single core 123, multi 398, not looking too great here. Next on the list we have Slingshot Extreme, this is an OpenGL 3.1 test. We got a total score of 574, and uh, luckily this does support Vulcan 1.1 right out of the box, so I could run the 3D Mark Wildlife test. We got a total score here of 274. And finally, and 2.2. Altogether, 117,995. I was really hoping to see a little more out of this board when it comes to benchmarks, and I mean, overall, when we take a look at all of these, these are pretty low-end scores. But still, let's go ahead and see how this thing handles some Android games, and we'll move over to emulation. First up, we have Minecraft, and uh, again, since we don't have Google Play services installed here, it's kind of hard to test a lot of stuff, so I downloaded the Minecraft trial. We're in survival mode, 12 chunks, fancy graphics off, and performance really isn't that bad. I mean, it would be playable on a device like this. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. Moving over to an easier to run game. This is something that, you know, I wouldn't want to play with a mouse and a keyboard, but uh, we have Among Us here, the Android version. And it's not a hard game to run, and as you can see here, it's running it at full speed. And finally, a game that I can run here without play services installed, Real Racing 3. Even though this is a very well optimized game, I've tested this on a lot of lower end ARM chipsets and Android TV boxes and things like that, and this does look like it's performing a bit better than the S905X3 or even the X4. Moving over to some emulation testing, first up we have N64 using RetroArch with the Moopin Core. This should be running at about 30 FPS, and it does dip down to around 28, but overall it's an enjoyable experience. I did try to run the standalone versions of Moopin 64 Plus FZ, but I can't get proper permissions to even install any games. Dreamcast using the Flycast Core. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and we're not quite steady at 60, but uh, it's still pretty playable. I wouldn't notice it dipping down if I didn't have that frame counter on. It's definitely playable like this. And finally, for our emulation testing, we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. This is a very easy game to run when it comes to PSP games. We're at 3x resolution using the Vulcan back end, and up in the top right hand corner you can see that we're at a steady 60. Now this doesn't mean that it's going to run every PSP game at full speed, because when I swapped over to Tekken 6, which I consider a mid-range game to run, even at 1x with all the hacks on, I couldn't get this to run at 60, you would have to turn frame skip on. Yeah. <laughs> 
So as it sits right now, I understand that it's a bit early for the RK3566 CPU in terms of firmware and things like that. And that's one of the big reasons I didn't test Linux right now. I could almost guarantee you, as of making this video, it would have been pretty slow. Android usually comes out of the box a little more optimized. We're getting decent UI performance here. Benchmarks aren't looking great. And when it comes down to it, this is really on par with the S905 X3 and the X4. We actually scored a bit higher on the GPU side of things, but when it comes to the S905 X3 running at 2 GHz, that does beat out the RK3566 in single and multi-core performance when it comes to something like Geekbench. But if I had these side by side, I'd really be hard pressed to tell the difference between the two. I think some of the main things that this specific little board has going for it is that M.2 slot running at PCIe 2.0 speeds and power consumption. I mean, this is a very low power consumption chip. And from the wall, using a kilowatt meter at idle, this only pulls 1.8 watts. 4K video playback, it jumps up to 3.4. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the GPU and the CPU at the same time was 5.2 watts. So running this on battery power would make sense. But that's going to wrap it up for this first video. Really appreciate you watching. Definitely keep an eye on the channel because I will have a Linux test coming up soon. And they also offer something called Station OS, their geek system which integrates a lot of media playback and gaming into one operating system. But as I'm making this video, it's not available for download for this specific board. But once that's available, I will make a video on it. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this board, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.